Well, I won the award, the overall award for um, FIPS Rising Star 2019. Um, and I still think someone's going to pull the rug up from under my feet and say, psych. But yeah, that's <laughs> what I won the award for. But the award is basically for anyone, um, obviously from mid to senior level, who has contributed significantly to their, to their company or made a, um, a difference in, in any way. So True Love has a very long lineage. We're about 57 years old um, and it's a completely proudly South African product and was birthed basically where black people in South Africa were looking at, I suppose, um, the idea of being emancipated, um, you know, getting freedom, working. So it was made to basically inspire women of color to be anything that they want to be, see people of the same hue doing things that they couldn't even actually believe that they wanted to do. And obviously our core focus is career, fashion, beauty, health, parenting, um, sex, relationships, you name it, anything that encompasses a woman's being. Um, hence our tagline is all a woman needs. Um, the core target market is still black. Uh, I, you know, it's, 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 not a, it's not new news to say that South Africa is still in a very awkward political climate, um, you know, almost 20 years post-democracy. But um, struggles between women great um, as, as a whole whether black or white are the same but they get even more complex amongst race so there's almost a hierarchy uh, between race and gender etc so the magazine is definitely still focused on a black female audience and with I think magazines um, going less and less into catering for a mass audience it helps us really um, speak to a niche and very targeted audience yeah. Oh, hundred percent, hundred percent. I mean, when you look at internationally, when you look at like what, uh, the, the titles that we look up to, or we, we want to model ourselves against, um, uh, a title like Essence and Ebony come up, and those are a handful in literally like trillions of magazines that are on the shelf. So yes, there aren't enough representations of um, women of color on the shelf, especially in South Africa, where when you count all the titles, we probably have about like. 20 um, and only two of those cater for women of color in a country that's predominantly uh, black oh that's I think one of my favorite questions so when I was um, tasked with the job of editor almost two years ago um, we were going back to basics um, going to a magazine that literally was the shining star of South African publishing um, at the verge of closure so I wasn't looking at it in terms of platforms or where I'm going to concentrate, I was looking at almost a brand building exercise, building trust. So now that we've got that back and it shows in our circ and the, you know and our finances, we're only now starting to to focus on certain channels. And obviously, the first place to start is the print publication that everyone's known to love and um, now we've diversified we do have a website we have a social media presence and I think our biggest biggest core pillar right now is our experiences our events are literally quadrupling um, the revenue that uh, our print uh, had had been doing and and digital talking about digital as much as we are moving towards uh, a, a di digital models South Africans Fortunately and unfortunately, aren't picking it up as fast enough because data costs a fortune in South Africa. Um, and those are the many barriers, like people live in, in areas where they can't even access the internet. Um, so we still have a lot of kind of disparities when it comes to the population, especially the black population. So we still have um, a market when it comes to our print. But saying that, we are doing, we're growing our uh, our digital very steadily and it's all more of an education exercise than it is just a here's a strategy let's launch it off we go yeah this is okay so true love is a heritage brand in the South African uh, audience so we have uh, our audience is so polarized it's insane you have someone as old as my mom who's 60 plus still buying the title and someone like me um, in my 30s who bought, who literally saw the magazine in the house, eventually, eventually fell in love with it and continued buying it. So those, those are the, almost the, you know, and now, you know, my daughter at some point will, will start buy, buying or consuming 
um, the type of uh, a True Love magazine, for example. So it's very hard to cater for everyone. Um, I do say though that on our digital and experiential um, level, that is our younger audience. And in terms of our print, it's still the core um, 35 plus audience. So in saying that, it's very hard to juggle all the balls. And I, and, and I have to say it, you know, I'd love to make as much money as possible out of everyone. But, um, you know, you win some, you lose some. You can't be everything to everyone. Um, and I know as, as the driver of the brand at the moment, I focus on a 35-year-old. You know, you literally think of where a 35-year-old would be in terms of life stages, career goals, etc. And that's how we, we produce the content. Gosh, um, I think the future of publishing definitely lies in, in talent. Um, and I won't say young talent, you know, I won't bottle it like that, but in talent, because it's in people that think differently from how traditional media has been run. And this is why, for example, a rising star is important, because as much as things have been done a certain way, I have a different way of consuming and thinking about packaging content that I think will maybe help people think differently. So uh, I think platforms like this allow us to engage where we're you know, on a level where we think, oh, can I put my hand up and say something? Is someone gonna say, think what I'm saying is stupid? Platforms like this, this basically says, you acknowledge, we see your work, we see you.